First of all, my name's Annie. I work here at Farm Focus and I'm a sheep and beef farmer in the wider Rapa as well. Today, we're going to run through Farm Focus at a bit of a slower pace. We're going to go through just the kind of basics so that you can get in there and get working. We'll take our time and go over things in a bit, um, at a bit of a slower pace. And we won't go into too much detail, but I'll show you when we're finished, if you want to get more information and have a look into some more, and there's lots more information available. So as I said, do feel free to um, unmute yourself and ask questions as we go. But I'll probably have a wee pause at the end of each section and we can go through any questions, have a bit of a discussion there. So I'm just going to share my screen with you. And hopefully you can all see that okay. See, if anybody can't see that or if you can't hear me, please do let me know. So the first thing I want to just cover before we get into the software itself is um, a few just things around using our web-based software. So we do recommend Google Chrome as your browser. You'll get kind of optimal efficiency. The, the software works best on Google Chrome. So if you look down to the bottom here, this little icon with the red, green and yellow, that's Google Chrome, the browser. So most computers have Google Chrome available. There's lots of other internet browsers, but we do recommend using Google Chrome. If you don't um, have this little icon on your desktop to open up Google Chrome, you could just into a search. I'll just open up another tab. If you just search for Google Chrome, you can install it on your computer that way. Because we're web-based, we can do things like zoom in and zoom out. So if I just hold down on my keyboard control, which is normally in the bottom left, CTRL, and the plus icon, you can see I can actually zoom the screen in. Now, sometimes when we're too zoomed in, like you can see there, it's actually really difficult to see. So I can hold down that control key and minus and it's going to zoom us out back to a nice view. So bottom left, that CTRL, that control key and plus, or minus to zoom in and zoom out. Sometimes when we look at things, you might have to scroll along the bottom to see everything. But if you just control minus and zoom out a little bit, um, it's, it's much better, it fits in much nicer. If I just, um, I'll show you first, if we log out, so when we're just at this login page, it's quite good to save it um, so that every time you open the internet, it's there. We can create a bookmark. So if you just click this wee star here, it will bookmark it. And we can save it how we'd like. Word farm focus is fine. You can save it as a bookmark or in a folder. And then you'll see I've now got it sitting along the top here. So when you open Chrome, you can just click and it will take you straight to the login page. So that's creating a bookmark, just using the wee star here. Another thing I really think is a great thing, in Rural, we have the icon, the Cash Manager Rural icon on our desktop. And it was quite nice to be able to just go straight there and it to open, um, open up Cash Manager Rural. And we can actually put a farm focus icon on our desktop as well. So if you would like an icon to take you straight to the farm focus login page, you just come up to the top right hand corner, these three dots. Come down to more tools. And create shortcut. You can then pop in whatever you'd like, just leave this as farm focus. And if I hit create, I just minimize this, you'll see you get this farm focus icon sitting on your desktop. So when you click on that, it will open up the farm focus web page, just the same as with the cash manager rural icon. So you don't have to have the farm focus icon. You can just open up Google Chrome and, and go to the website. But if you would like that icon, as I said, we just do our three dots in the top right, more tools and create shortcut and it's quite nice just having that icon on the desktop then we're, we're ready to go. 
Now you might have noticed me just before duplicating the tab. Because we're web-based, we can have multiple tabs open. And the easiest way to do that, if you come up to the top here and right click, you'll see you've got option to duplicate the tab. And it opens you up another tab. Now, if I just log in here, it means that you could have, say, your farm focus database open in one tab. And in the other tab, I'll just duplicate this one now we're in there. We could, for example, have the help center open. So it's quite handy, and then you can flick between Farm Focus and between the Help Center. I've got a, a bar at the top. It's, there we go. So having those multiple tabs open is really handy. You could have, say, the Help Center article open and also have your, your database open. Or you might like to have the settings page open, so you've got your codes there and the software open in another tab. We do find a lot of people now are quite enjoying having two screens in their office. So again, you could have even your emails with maybe your invoices open on one screen and Farm Focus on the other, or um, you the Help Center open on one screen and the database open on the other. So if you've got two screens, it's a great idea. Or the other thing quite a few people do is if you've got, maybe you do your work on the laptop, but if you've got a tablet, you could have the tablet maybe with the Help Center open. So you could be working away have that tablet almost like a second screen um, and, and that works really well. So just while we've got the help center open we'll just take a quick look at that first of all. So to get to that help center you might have seen me just before I'll just show you again. Once you're in there this bottom left hand corner we can click help and it opens up this help center. Within the Help Centre, we've now got a whole library of videos with everything um, in, a, in a nice video that you can watch. So you can have a look through there. With these videos, if you come to the settings cog, once you've hit play, there's a settings cog in the bottom and it allows you to slow the videos down. I'll just find one that shows us. Here we are, it gives you the tips at the top. So once you're playing, this settings cog is there and you can choose to have it playing at a lower speed. And so just down the bottom here on the video, there'll be a settings cog and you just choose playback speed and you can slow it down. So if it's going too fast, you can slow it down and it plays a bit slower. Or of course you can play and pause, get caught up and then play again when you're ready. So there's lots of really good videos as well as all the topics. So you can go through and just click into any of the areas and you'll see all the topics there. We also have a really, really good search function built in. So you can type anything into the search bar and it'll narrow down um, the results that you're looking for. A really handy one, if we just type in here, team viewer, if some of you have run in the past, quite often we ask you to run Team Viewer, and it's a way that we can actually just see your screen and work with you to have a look at what's going on and help you solve it. But it can be a bit of a headache sometimes just getting the Team Viewer going. A lot of computers have got it on there anyway, ready to go. But if you're going to ring and you think that we all need to come in and have a look, if you just jump into the Help Centre and type in Team Viewer, We've got a great topic here that talks you through how to install it. And so we'd really recommend if you think we'll need to, you can jump in and do this before you even call. But you might want to do it anyway, just to have it there for future. And there's really good step-by-step -step instructions of go to the website and how to download it. So I found that just by typing Team Viewer into the Help Centre. And as I say, we've got this topic here. And if we need to remote into your computer, this is how we'll do it. So now that we've run through that, we'll jump in and take a look at the software. So once you've logged in, you'll be met here with the dashboard. If you've got multiple farms, if you've got multiple databases, you just come up to this top left-hand corner 
And this is where you can move between your different databases. If you've got one main form, one that you want to be the, the first one that opens when you log in, if we just click, this will be your initials or a photo if you set a picture. If we just click here, we can go to preferences and set your default form. So that means it'll be the first one that opens when you log in. So that was just by clicking your initials or your picture and going to preferences. Also um, underneath that profile there is where you can update your billing details and have a look at what forms you've got access to and check your personal details. And if you needed to ever reset your password, perhaps, this is where you can come and do that. But as I say, with the multiple forms, you can flick between your different databases here. In terms of moving around the software, you'll see on this left-hand side, we've got different screens. So you can click here to take you to any of those areas. If I click this X in the top left-hand corner, it shuts it down to be what we call a quick nav menu. So now that we've got it closed down to quick nav, you can jump into a specific area that you're looking for. Or if you prefer to be able to see the list view, you can just click these lines now in the top left and it's back looking how it did before. And then for example, if I click on settings, you can see all the different settings that we can go into here. And if I collapse it down, that's when we could just say we were wanting to um, take a look at our users. We could just jump straight into that area. Now, in terms of giving people access to your database, you come under settings to users and we can add people to have access to your database. And also, if anyone's already got access, we can check what access level and change it if we need to from here. So the access levels we've got in Farm Focus are organization admin. That's full access to your whole database. This is what your accountant needs to have. So it'd be worth just double checking that that's what they've got. So organization admin is full access. They can make changes and go in and see everything. Restricted means that people cannot get into your settings and billings. So if you want them to go in and be able to make changes but not amend your settings or billings, the restricted is great. And in your database, you'll also have what we call reporting access. This is just a demo, so I don't have that option here. But in your database, you'll have reporting access, which is read only. Great for maybe the bank manager or people that you want to go in and view things, but not make any changes. We'll also take a look now just quickly at the code settings. So if I just click codes here and come into farm codes, this is your code list. And if you've migrated across from Rural, this will be your exact code list from Rural. In the top left here, you'll see we've got these wee chevrons. And this is how we can quickly expand and collapse the different areas. So you'll see there at category level, we've got all the categories. And then if I drop down here, that's all our extended codes. And as I say, this is your code list that's come across from Rural. So the chevrons will collapse and expand the whole areas. Or just using the arrows on the left hand side, we could drop down, say, just one category at a time. In Cash Manager Rural, we use the right click of our mouse a lot. If we were looking for extra options or menus, we'd right click and it would bring up those options. In Farm Focus, you're going to see these three dots throughout the software. So let's just say we'd like to add a new extended code under other farm income. I can click the three dots there and you'll see I've got my options. In this case, I want to add a new extended code. So I'll click that there. Um, let's just choose a short code. So I'll maybe pop an F or create a um, extended code. Let's just say for some forestry income. So I've popped in my short code, I've popped in the name, the GST type's correct. And we just want to be sure that it's sitting in the right area for reporting. And then if I click done, 
you'll see now under other farm income, I've now got that new extended code. If we've got things there that we don't want anymore, we can again use the three dots and you'll see you've got the option to deactivate. So if something has been used before, you can't delete it because it's got data attached to it, but we can deactivate and it hides it from view. This is also good if you've got codes that you don't need now, but you might need again, you can deactivate and then it will be hidden from view unless you choose to show inactive codes and then the inactive ones will be available to reactivate. If you've never used a code before, you'll see we've got the option there to delete, which gets rid of them forever. So having come across from farm uh, to farm focus from rural, it's really good to just have a review of your code list. You can rattle through and check everything as it should be. And at category level, so at that bold line, use your three dots to add in new extended codes. If you want to get rid of things that you've never used before, you can delete. Or if you have used them before, but you want to hide them from view, we can deactivate. Now, I see someone here has raised their hand. Did somebody have a question, perhaps? Let's just see. If somebody did have a question, do feel free to unmute yourself and ask there. Um, so, so that's your code list. It is your code list, but certainly um, go through and have a tidy up. Now I can see we do have a question. Somebody's asking, what are the um, slash symbols on the right hand side of the income and expense columns? So these are your accountant's codes and they can go in, you don't need to worry too much about them because your accountant will go in, but they can go through and pop their accountant's codes in and this maps into their general ledger. So they'll generally go through and have it all nicely mapped. So when they take it to their system, it's all ready to go. Um, so yeah, great question. That's your accountant's code and they, they'll pop these in. Quite nice, I think. If you would like to um, print this rather than look on the screen, I think if you're going to review your code list, you can, for example, you could drop down all your extended codes, so you've got all the detail. And then in the top right hand corner here, there is a print icon. So if you want to print it out and then it can sit on the coffee table and you can you know, make notes what you'd like to change, that's absolutely fine. You could print it and have a copy um, there to, to have a look at. So we'll back out, out that farm codes area. And I'll next go into bank accounts. So again, having come across from rural, your bank accounts will have come with you. If you don't have bank feeds running, we'd really recommend getting your bank feeds set up. So all the major banks we have bank feeds available for, apart from BNZ, but we're very, very close. The BNZ bank feed will get released very soon. We've just nearly finished testing it. So if you're with any of the other banks and you don't have bank feeds running, if you click here, into your account and scroll down to the very bottom, you'll have an area to um, download that bank feed authority form. So definitely do this. And it just means that when the transactions happen at the bank, um, they'll come and appear in the software ready for coding or matching to an invoice. So it takes a huge amount of the work out of it and also a huge amount of kind of human error risk because it comes in nicely with the date and the other party in the description just ready for you to, to code. So if you don't have bank feeds running, you just come to the bank account setting, click into your account, scroll down to the bottom and download that form and get it back to us. And, and BNZ, we're, we're really, really close. I'd also just like to show you the connector setting. So down at the bottom here, you'll see connectors. These suppliers here, we can set up a direct feed from. So say farmlands, if you connect that, it just means when your farmland statement becomes available, it will feed directly into the system. Again, it takes away loads of work because it's nicely laid out in the different, um, different purchases rather than having to manually split it up. So definitely connect that farmlands feed or any of the others that you use. And this list will continue to grow. We're going to add to this connectors list. 
This invoice scanner is new. We didn't have anything like this in rural, and it's definitely worth taking the time to connect this. The invoice scanner, once connected, gives your database its own unique email address. And it means when you receive um, invoices, you can actually forward them into Farm Focus and they'll appear ready for coding. It's lovely because it saves that original PDF, that original document, gets saved so your accountant can see it. And you can have it there to refer back to. You don't need to print it out anymore. Um, and also the software will read the invoice and actually lay it out nicely for you. It'll pick up all the relevant information ready for you coding. So if I just click in there, this is a demo database. So um, I can't actually connect it, but you just click that button there to connect invoice scanner. And then once it's, it's instant, and you'll see there'll be an email address appear. And actually I would recommend that you go into your own email account and save it as a contact. If you, um, all the emails are a wee bit different, but if you just go into your contacts or your address book and save it, then it's there. And when you receive invoices, you can simply hit forward and send it on into the system. And I'll show you shortly um, where those invoices go. There are a few other settings in there that are worth having a look through. A lot of them just kind of general business settings, but you can double check all of them as you go through. But they're the kind of main ones to be aware of for now. I'm going to move now to the actual screen. And Les, did anyone have any questions around this settings area? I'll just have a wee pause for a minute and we'll see. Uh, to feel free to unmute yourself if you'd like to ask a question or if you hover over that Zoom a menu bar, you should have the option to chat. You can send something through that way too. Awesome, we'll move on to the actuals area now. So if I just click on the left hand side here to actuals, this is effectively our transaction screen. You'll see now, though, instead of just being one screen with loads of information, we've now um, got these tabs along the top. And these are basically just filtered views of the same thing. So needs action. Everything sitting here is waiting for some attention. It's not yet been dealt with. When things are dealt with, they move to completed. The stock activity is a filtered view, only showing stock events. So it's a really great place to go to, to see a specific stock event. Balancing is our reconciling. Tax invoices are invoices that we've created to send out to people. And then repeating invoices are those recurring ones that we've set to automatically generate every fortnight or whatever. And we'll go through these tabs shortly, but just be aware that see the actual screen um, these tabs are really just filtered views of the same thing. So it is really your transaction screen, but we can kind of quite easily filter and look for something specific. I first want to just show you the bank transaction side because it does look a bit different now. We've got invoices on the left and we've got bank transactions on the right. So we'll take a look at these bank transactions first of all. And this is where if you want to work quite similarly to how we did in rural, this is your go-to. We just come to this bank transaction side. So in terms of getting our bank transactions in there, we really have three options. Number one, if we have bank feeds running, our bank transactions will just automatically pop up here. These ones have come in through a bank feed and they're just nicely laid out, ready to go. If you're with BNZ, or one of the other banks, or you don't want to have bank feeds running, we can bring in a file from the bank. So with, let's say, for example, BNZ, you can click into your account, and there's an export button at the top of your um, transaction list. And you can pop in the date range that you want to export and select QIF as the file type, and then hit download, and it will generate a file. You can then come to this upload download icon and bring in a bank transaction file and you just browse for it and it will be your most recent download so if we hit browse and then we'll go to downloads on the left and it will just be your most recent one 
and then we can bring that in. So to manually import your bank transactions, first go to your internet banking and download the file. Then we just come to the upload download icon, select the bank transaction file. If you've got multiple accounts, make sure you select which account it's going to. We hit browse. And it will generally just be sitting in your downloads folder and it'll be the most recent one, the top one there. And then we can hit open to bring it in. But certainly if you can have bank feeds, um, then they will just automatically generate there. And you can, if you want to manually enter things, you also have that option. So this plus record button, and you can choose whether it's money in or money out and manually enter things. But as I mentioned, certainly having the bank feeds or the bank import takes away a lot of that risk for human error and saves you a huge amount of work. So now that we've got our bank transactions there, oh, sorry. You'll see we've got all the details as a little kind of review on this screen. I'd just first like to point out these headers. Now, throughout Farm Focus, you're going to see headers like this, kind of column headings. And actually, these headers act to reorder throughout the software. So if we click here, it will sort it by other party. So you'll see it'll put it in an alphabetical list. Or you could perhaps sort by amount, and it'll sort it that way. So it's a really, really handy tool to be able to um, hit these headers and quickly group things and sort things to, to find what you're looking for. When we have a look at this, we've got a few ways we can code things. So I'll go in a second and show you all about our invoices. But for this example, let's just say actually we just want to code our bank transactions. We're quite happy just coding away. And we can easily do that. And there's a few quick things we've got to, to make that really quick and efficient. So I've sorted by other party. And I can see these ones for the shop are all drawings. These are definitely all drawings. And I don't need to split them into multiple lines. I don't really need to add any extra detail. I just want to code these to drawings. So I have the option in Farm Focus. Can you see these little boxes to the left? I can use those to multi-select. I'll just say that one's no drawings, but these ones I've selected, these are all drawings. Now that I've multi-selected, in the top right-hand corner, I can hit this code button. So I've selected things that I want to code all to the same thing. And I don't need to split them into multiple lines or anything. I can just hit code. And here, I'm just going to pop in drawings. And I can hit code here. That's going to code all those ones for the shop, two drawings, and off they go to this completed screen, because that's them now coded and dealt with. So if there's things that you're going to code all to the same thing, you've got those tick boxes to multi-select and quickly code them all. The next thing I want to talk about is coding rules. So in rural, we had auto codes and farm focus, we call them coding rules. And they're just ways that if something's going to be the same every time it comes through, we can set up a rule. So the software says, yeah, we recognize this. We know what to code it to and the work will be done for you. So you can see this little icon here against some of the transactions. What that tells me is that I've got a coding rule set up for that transaction. I can just see our questions come through. So I'll just take a pause and check that. Your screen in the top right is blocking the view of the buttons you're referring to. Oh, let me just move this. Apologies for that. So can you see, hopefully you can see that now. Okay, do let me know if you can't. Um, so hopefully you can all see that. So do, do come through and let me know if you can't see it. So these ones here with this little icon, that tells me I've created a coding rule for those and I've told the software I really trust the rule. I don't need to double check anything. Um, I just want that coding rule to apply. So because these ones have this trusted coding rule set up, I can just hit this run coding rules button. 
it double checks that I don't want to match to an invoice. And in this case, I don't, so I can just hit run and off they go to the completed screen. So I'll show you how to set up one of these coding rules now. Let's just say, you can see a few here that are bank charges. So these are gonna be the same every time they come through. So to set up the coding rule, I can click in to the transaction. From here, you can see there's an icon in the top right hand corner. If I click there, it's gonna create this new coding rule for me. Now the benefit of this is you'll see it's actually grabbed that information. It's recognized the different fields and set it up all for me. Now let's just say you um, think one of these criteria aren't useful. You do have the option to bin it. Sometimes when we're creating a rule, there might be a reference, might be the invoice number, and it's gonna be different every time it comes through. So you'd use your bin to get rid of that. But in this case, I'm really happy with those criteria. And down here, I'm going to code the full amount to, I'll just start in bank charge. And then I've got a wee choice down the bottom here. If I think on occasion this coding rule might not apply, I can choose to review it individually. <clears throat> that means the coding rule will commit, but I will have the chance to double check it before it goes to completed. <clears throat> or I can choose to review it as part of a group, which means I just hit that run coding rules button and off it goes to complete it. So there are your two options. Review individually if you would like to double check it before the coding rule commits, or as part of a group, and that's when you can just hit that run coding rules button. So in this case, um, I'm happy to do it as part of a group because I'm pretty confident it's always going to be a bank charge. And if I save that, you'll see it lets me you know that coding rules applied. And you can now see this other one that's got the same criteria. It's now got the icon, it knows there's the coding rule set up. And because I um, chose to review it as part of a group, I can now just hit that run coding rules button and off it'll go to completed. You won't have to code those bank charges anymore. I mentioned that sometimes you might want to double check the coding and this one for overdraft, this has a coding rule set up, but I've said that I want to review it individually. So you'll see when I click in, the coding's been done. But I have had to open it. I could over type it if, it if I wanted to change it. But in this case, I don't, I can save it. So those review individually ones means that you do have to click on it to open it and save it rather than just totally trusting it and hitting the button. I can see we've got another question. Oh, we're still blocking, I wonder. Um, I might just, might, what, is it the top or the bottom that's blocking? I'm just not sure, because I'm not seeing anything blocked on, on my screen. I wonder. Mike, if you just let me know which area of the screen that you cannot see, um, and I can see if I can move it, because from my side, I can see everything okay. You're sitting in the top right. So if I'm sitting in the top right, Mike, if you just grab that window and pull it to the middle, and you maybe won't be able to see, but in your top right of your screen, you should be able to restore it to fill the screen. I think it might just be because you might have me just minimized a wee bit. Have a go at that. If I am, I'll just show you what I mean. If it's sitting like this, and it might be like pushed to the side, but you should be able to um, move it around. And if you click that square in the top right, it should fill the screen for you again. Have a wee go at that. I wonder if that's it. Oh, you've shifted me. Perfect. Hopefully you can see that. Okay. That's great. Um, yep. Yeah, so we just ran through the coding rules there. The more of those you get set up, the better. It becomes really efficient if you can just come in and, and run those coding rules. Now, of course, there's going to be ones that we need to manually code. So this is a working quite like we did in Cash Manager Rural. So those ones that we just want to get coded. So let's just say this one that was left over from the shop. If I just click in here, 
you'll see I've got the option just to hit code. When we get a little bit in, I'm going to show you the invoices side, and that's where we'd match if we had an invoice, but in this case, we just want to code. So as soon as I pick code here, you'll see I can get my coding done. So let's just say in this example, I maybe bought some pens, I got some stationery. And notice there, I'm just starting to type the word stationery and it brings up the results. So in Farm Focus, we can just type the keyword and it'll bring it up for us. In Rural, we're so familiar with typing in our category, but you can still do that. So if we type in AD, You'll see it first of all does bring up everything with ADN, but as soon as I pop that colon on the end, it does refine it to administration. So it's, I think not this, this release, but the next one, we do have an improvement coming that you'll be able to type AD and it will bring up administration as your first option. But for just now, just um, pop that colon on the end and it will refine it to administration. So in terms of if you want to just um, work like you did in rural, pop in that category, but do put your colon and then the, um, the extended code just goes straight on the end. Or, as I said, you can just type, start typing a keyword, which is quite handy if, you, if you're not so familiar with your code list. And in this case, I'll just use my down arrow to go to stationary. And I can tab through, much like I did in rural, popping in the details, tabbing through. I'll get to the end here and let's just say the pens were $19. So I can change that line amount to be the 19. And then I can tab to add new line, hit enter. Um, and let's just say I got some printer paper or something. I want to put that down to computer. And again, I can tab through or maybe let's just say it was some printer ink, not that you'd get it for that price. And I can keep tabbing through and then tab to add new line. And then let's just say the other bits and pieces were just drawings. So you'll see there, I've split that one transaction into the multiple lines. So the amount at the top in green is always what's left the bank, but I can change these line amounts. And as long as those line amounts all add up to the total, it's nice and tidy and I can save it. This paper clip in the top right hand corner is great. If you would like to save attachments to a transaction or an invoice, you can just click on the paper clip. If you have it downloaded, you can browse for it. And whatever it may be, we can click and open and it will save that attachment. Or we do have the option if you um, have it sitting maybe in emails or let's just say in, in your folder here, we can actually just drag and drop and it will save there. So two options. First is click your paper clip. From there, if you've got it downloaded, you can browse for it or if it's maybe um, sitting on your desktop or something, you can click on it, hold your mouse down, drag and drop. And it's gonna save. And as you can see there, you can save multiple attachments to each transaction. So this is great for invoices. Maybe if you've got receipts or um, grazing contracts, way dockets from the trucking company and um, quotes that you've received for things, anything you like really, you can get saved there. And then you can always come back, click on the paper clip and click on the ones you want to view. So that's a real great improvement from Rural to be able to save those attachments. So you can take pictures on your phone or scan, or if you have them maybe emailed to you, they'll be sitting as an attachment in the emails. I've got this nicely coded, I've split it into my different lines and I can now save. That's fully coded and dealt with and off it goes to completed. So you'll see from that, you can do your bulk coding if you just wanna quickly code things all to the same simple coding. Definitely create those coding rules where you can. 
And then for the other ones that you want to manually hold, we can click in, hit code, and pop in your coding that way. Remembering that if we change this line amount and choose to add new line, we can break it down that way, making sure that our line amounts add up to our total, and then we can save. So that is really working quite similarly to how we did in, in how we did in rural, just manually coding our transactions. But what I want to show you now is this invoices side. So this is quite different to rural. And the reason we have this invoices side is we can get our invoices loaded up and then we can quickly um, get them coded and dealt with while they're nice and fresh in our mind. It's got all that nice rich data there, all the information is there. And then we can pay our bills and simply match the bank transactions off to the invoice. So it's all about getting that data in nice and early, getting it dealt with. And then the bank transactions, we just simply match off um, when the bills have been paid. So there's a few ways we can get our invoices in. The first thing is that invoice scanner. So if you go to the connector and um, have that email address, we can send invoices to that email and they'll appear on this invoices side. You can tell the ones that have come in through invoice scanner because they've got this little icon here. Those ones have come in through the invoice scanner. We can also import CSV files. So if you're with maybe PGG rights thins, we can choose from this upload download icon to bring in a supplier invoice. And let's just say it's PGG. You could browse for that CSV file that you can get from their website and bring it in. We can create tax invoices to send to people. If you click this create tax invoices here, you can build a tax invoice. We can tell those ones, the ones we've created, because they've got this little um, token here with the invoice details, or we can manually record invoices. So the invoice scanner is brilliant for quite simple invoices, ones that are laid out quite nicely. As I mentioned, the software actually reads the invoice. So if it's nicely laid out, it reads it and all that work's done for you. If you have an invoice that's got lots of information on it, the software will try and read all the information. So we can just manually save our invoices too. To do that, we just hit this plus record button. And let's just say it's money out. Now a good example is um, our, we just received a bill to reconnect the internet at one of the cottages. Now it's a whole page of uh, travel charges, reconnection fees, all the different bits and pieces. And I did send it in through Invoice Scanner and the software picked up every single line. And I didn't need that much detail. I didn't want all that coming through on the invoice. So in the end, I thought, actually, I'm just going to manually record it. So I just popped in the amount, made sure all the details up here were correct, the invoice date, due date, other party. And then I just popped in my um, coding. And I, I do have a split rule set up for this one, but actually I could claim everything there. So I didn't use that rule, I undid that. So it now um, has just been manually created. And if the bill had been paid, I could match it. And if the bill's not been paid, I can just save it. So I'll just show you that one again. This also works really well for kill sheets. And um, buyer created invoices don't get read particularly well by the invoice scanner. So those ones, you can just hit plus record. In this case, it's been money in. Pop in all our details. And then go through and pop in the coding. Under on here. and go through, pop in all the details. Noticing here in the top right, we've got our paper clip, so we can still save our kill sheet as an attachment. If it's come through on the email, you can just drag and drop it or browse for it if you've downloaded it. 
um, and save it. So that's how we can pop our kill sheets in, just using that plus record button. But the ones that have come in through invoice scanner, we'll just jump in and take a look at one of them here. So when I click in, you can see the software has actually read all the details. It's broken it up into all the different lines and popped in all the relevant information. So the software will have read this invoice. Now, occasionally it doesn't read it properly or it's not picked up the information that you want. So you've got two options now to, to correct it if you needed to. One is you can just use your three dots to delete lines that shouldn't be there. Sometimes it brings up maybe some zero dollar lines if there's blank lines on the invoice, so we can delete those. If there's lines missing, we can down the bottom here, hit add new line to add extra lines, or we can hit fill in the gaps. Now the benefit of filling in the gaps is it actually teaches the software where you want it to look. And you can, if you do this a few times, the software will remember what you've told it and it'll start to read them better. So in this case, let's hit fill in the gaps. We proceed. Now, when we look here, it looks a bit daunting. You think, my goodness, what is all this? But on the right hand side, we've got the different fields that Farm Focus is looking for. And then you can see on the left hand side here, it's the actual invoice. And you can see where the software's looked to pick up the information. So with this other party, let's just say for this example, actually that's not correct. And um, the other party should have been this farm focus area. So I click in the other party field and I just drag a wee box over where I want it to look. And you'll see that's now what it's picked up. But in this case, that was correct. So if I just show you again, we click in the field on the right and then drag a wee box over where we want it to look. And that's the information it'll pick up. So let's just say if this reference wasn't correct, we could click there and drag a box over where we wanted it to look. And that's the information it'll pick up. And once you've done that a few times, the software will remember, actually that's not the reference, this is. Um, so it is worth taking the time to do this, particularly if it's a supplier you use regularly. And then you can see this is the different lines it's picked up. And in this case, it's great. It's picked up the correct information. But if um, maybe say this was the quantity that was important, you could click in that field and say, actually, this is where I wanted you to look. But in this case, the, the two was right. So we'll just correct that, leave it there. So once you've gone through and fixed it up, using the little negative to delete lines that shouldn't be there, the green positive to add lines, and then filling in the fields, we can save it. In this case, I read it really well, but this is just if you did want to correct it. So again, with the invoices, the more coding rules we set up, the better. The invoice coding rules um, we set up on this invoices side because there's a slightly different information to what we have in a bank transaction. So with on the invoices side, we actually use our three dots at the end of the line to create a new coding rule. Now in this example, I'm not bothered what the line description says each time. And I'm not bothered about the reference. It's just this other party. Every time we use them, they're always fixing the tractor. So in this example, I'm going to use the waste paper basket to bin the line description. And I'm going to bin the reference because all I want to keep is that tractor repair. And then in here, I'm just going to pop in my vehicle tractor code. If I left this blank, it would keep the line descriptions for me, or if I pop in, say, tractor repairs, it will pop that on every line. So it's up to you if you want it to have the same description, but actually if you want to keep the line descriptions, leave it blank, we'll save, and you'll see now that that coding has been applied to all those lines based on the fact that the other party has the rule set up against it. And because I left that description blank, the software keeps the description from the invoice. So actually this invoice now is fully coded, it's totally dealt with and I can save it. 
I'll not need to code a tractor invoice again because I've got that rule set up now. So you'll see there, it's now slightly greyed out. The ones in white are still waiting for me to do some coding, but these greyed out ones are fully coded and dealt with. I'll just show you a coding rule once again. So if we click into this Farmax one, sorry, this one's already got a coding rule. So you'll see again, that's fully coded, dealt with, doesn't need me to do anything else with it. We'll jump into this country vex one. This is waiting for some coding. And then this is where we can get specific with our coding rules. This drawn set, that's always gonna be for the dogs. So if I come to my three dots, choose to create a new coding rule. This is gonna come through every time. And the other party, I want to leave that. The reference, I'm not bothered about, that's gonna be different every time, so I'll bin that. And if I just type in dog, and I'll leave that description. If I save that, that drone set will now code on that invoice each time. I was specific about my description and that's why it's only coded that line. So this is great for things like farmlands. You can have the word Gallagher set to code to fencing, the word Hanson can code to um, water repairs, um, the word tucks can um, automatically code to dog tucker. So these specific rules are great and definitely anything you see um, that will always be the same, Use your three dots on the invoices side to create a new coding rule. We've got a few other things we can do in here. Again, we can use that bulk coding. So let's just say um, we want to code these two to VET. I can multi-select. And I can just pop the coding in once. And it'll code those selected lines. So again, if you had, say, a big fencing project on the go, you could tick, 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 just pop your fencing code in once and it'll apply to all those selected lines. The great thing in Focus is we can partially code an invoice, save it and come back and finish it later. So if you need to check some information or find something out, we can come back to it later. So on this invoices side, we get our invoices in and we get them coded. And from there, we can pay our bills. So we've got two options to pay our bills. One, you can jump into your internet banking and pay your bills as you always have. Or if you come to this upload download icon again, we can grab a bank transaction file. Oh, sorry, my mistake grab a bill payment file. And you'll see here, these are all your invoices that you've got in there. You can select the ones you want to pay, hit download, and it'll generate a file that you can take to your internet banking to quickly pay your bills. So there's nothing wrong with paying your bills online as you always have, but if you wanted to use this feature, once you've got your invoices in, and as long as you've got the bank details set up against the contact in your settings, we can grab a bill payment file, select the bills we want to pay, and take that file to the bank. Really quick and efficient way to pay the bills. So now that we've got our bills paid, we need to match our bank transactions to these invoices. And we've got a couple of ways to do that. We can click on the bank transaction and you'll see you can match and it brings up the coded invoices there. Or if we click in here, you'll see again, you've got a match button from the invoices side and we can tick the bank transaction and save. They are now joined together and off they've gone to completed. So from the invoices side, we can click match or from the bank transaction side, we can click match or 
we've got this icon in the top right hand corner, which is our quick matching. So this is really good, particularly after the 20th of the month, if you've got loads of matching to do. We can just hit quick match. And it just brings up all your coded invoices on the left and your bank transactions on the right. If there's any invoices missing from there, it probably means they're not coded. They only appear here to available to match if they're coded. And from this quick match, you can just tick the invoice, tick the bank transaction and match. Or you could do it the other way, you know, tick the bank transaction, tick the invoice and match. You do have the option as well. Let's just say this tractor repairs invoice. We had, we paid two installments of $1,200. So there you'll see you have two bank transactions, but one invoice and we can match that too. That's totally fine. So that's our quick matching. And I got there just by clicking this icon in the top right hand corner. The reason it's telling me I've got nothing to match there was because I haven't yet coded these invoices. So if you're going to use this invoices side, we get our invoices coded, we do our matching, and then we simply code the bank transactions that are left. You will always have some bank transactions to code because they'll always be like interest payments, bank charges, and things like that. But certainly using the invoices side, there's lots of benefits. It is a wee bit different. But once you get in the swing of it, it works really well. I'll just quickly show you one more. Let's just do this Farm Fuels one. In this case, I actually just want to select them all. So I've ticked them all. I just did that here in the top left. And in this case, I just want to quickly code them all to fuel. So I just need to pop that coding in once and it's applied to all those lines. I then have the match button available because it's fully coded. Match, there's the payment there, save, and that's now matched together and off it's gone to the completed screen. Now, does anybody have any questions at this point around um, bringing in our invoices, getting them coded, matching, and just coding our bank transactions? We'll just have a wee pause here. If anybody wants to run over anything again, please do let me know. Oh, I can see somebody's raised a hand. So I wonder if that perhaps if we could unmute you. You should now be able to unmute yourself if you did want to ask a question. Okay, do let me know if, you, if you've got a question there. Maybe not. That's all right. So do, do sing out with questions as we go. So I've mentioned this completed tab a few times. Everything that's coded or matched and all dealt with moves to completed. This is also where your um, transactions from rural will have come to. So when I click completed, you can see here everything's all fully coded and dealt with. I can view it by coded lines which lets me see the coding. And if I'd split it into multiple lines, I'd be able to see all that detail. Or, and this is just in the top right-hand corner, I can view it by transactions, which is the individual bank transactions and without the, the coding and the split details. So you can view it either way by transactions or coded lines just by flicking across the options at the top right there. You can view previous years by coming to this little drop down here. Or you also have the option to do a custom date range if you're looking for something specific. So that's just in the drop down in the top left there. We also have a really good search function built in. So if I click the um, little icon there, and if I just 
type the word, say, tractor, you'll see it will bring up the search results there. You can also put in dollar values here or dates. So if you're looking for something specific, the search bar works really well for keywords, other parties, dates and amounts. As I mentioned before, the headers act to reorder throughout the software. So we could click the other party and it'll sort by other party or maybe sort by code. You can check that you've been consistent with your coding. And so you can get lots of good information out of this completed screen, flicking between previous years or custom date ranges, searching and sorting. Anything that you've given a livestock code to sits under stock activity. So this is a great place to come to find all your livestock events. And again, you could perhaps sort by event to see all your different, um, you know, if you had purchases and sales and, and look at what happened in the previous year as well. And this is also where we can add in non-financial events. So of course your sales and purchases, you've got your transaction, your invoice to, to get your information in. But we do have to remember to add in our non-financial events just using this plus non-financial event button. And so you can select the event, let's just see your births, pop in your date, what it is that's been born, who the parent was, and the quantity, and that will feed through into your stock rec. So that's your stock activity tab. Now we'll come along to balancing. So this is a wee bit different. In Cash Manager Rural, we talked about reconciling. We created a statement page and we matched transactions to that page. And that worked really well you know, when we were always getting paper statements, we could go through and, and match them to that statement. But with the move away from paper statements and a lot more online banking, we've, we've come up with this daily balancing. And it's great because if there's a wee discrepancy, rather than having a whole month statement to work through to try and find the problem, we've got this daily balancing now. And if you've got your bank feeds running, it all filters through from the bank. And so it's very quick and easy to find a discrepancy. So on here, we've got a bank balance. And if you've got bank feeds running, this will come through from your internet banking. So that's your true bank balance. Your focus balance is a total of all your coded transactions. So when you're fully coded down here, you'll see that we're nicely balanced. So when everything's as it should be, your bank balance and your focus balance will be the same. And you get this nice green line, letting you know that you're balanced up to that point. If you become unbalanced, we can pinpoint the exact day that you've gone from being balanced to being unbalanced, and then you can quickly find the problem. Generally, it means you'll have an uncoded transaction, and you can see those here. See how this one's left bold? And it says it's specifically uncoded. So that's why we've become unbalanced. Once you've coded those uncoded ones, your nice green line will move up. So it's that daily balancing, that daily reconciliation. And with the bank feeds particularly, because your transactions are coming from the bank and your balance is coming from the bank, it really does take care of itself. When you first come across from rural, because in rural, we have that monthly reconciliation and farm focus does pick up if it's not correct to the day. We do have the option in your database, so this demo can't do it, but in your database, you will have an accept focus balances button. So when you first migrate, if you're unbalanced, but you can see actually that the focus balance is right and Often the bank balance is correct too, because at the month end you've been correct, just might be the days in between aren't quite right. You can just hit that accept focus balances button um, and it will understand the monthly reconciliation might not be bang on through the month, but at the end of the month, we're happy. Because you do want to see that nice green line up to where you're coded to. When you first migrate, sometimes it, 
it, it does take a wee while to get this nice and tidy. If you're having trouble with it, do give us a call and we can jump in and tidy it up, make sure it's all nice and, and ready to go. Did anybody have any questions about this balancing screen? See, this is a wee bit different, but once you get used to it, it's um, actually a lot more straightforward than the reconciling we had in rural. Cool. We'll move on now. I just want to take you to the GST return. So we've got our invoices in, we've coded them and matched them, or we've coded our bank transactions. We've jumped in here and we've made sure we're balanced up to our GST period end. And we can now come to reports and GST return. So as with Rural, based on your coding, the software knows what what we're paying and claiming for GST and all the work will be done for you. If we just jump in and take a look at this one here, you'll see very similar to rural, we've got it laid out with all your different boxes there. If you want to check your coding, you can hit here in the bottom left to drop down all your coded lines and you can rattle through and, and have a wee look at them. And again, we can, sort this way, maybe sort by other party just to make sure um, it's nice and consistently coded, or you might want to sort by code using those headers. Once you're happy that everything's all nice and tidy and everything's um, ready to go, you can just finalize it and manually file it with the inland revenue, whether you post it or log into my IR. But in Farm Focus, we do have the ability using this little arrow in the bottom right to file with the inland revenue. So once you've got it all tidy, we can click this arrow and file with inland revenue. This takes you actually through your MyIR login and it'll populate all the boxes for you. You don't need to type anything in, you just hit submit. The next time you go to file your GST return, you literally just hit file with IR and it says, submitted, thank you very much. You only need to put your MyIR login the first time and it will retain that connection to your MyIR. So it's so quick and efficient in filling out um, that GST return in MyIR because you don't need to populate the boxes anymore. We do that for you. You do just need to be mindful that we can't authorize the payment. So if you're owing on your GST, you will still need to um, make that payment. So from the GST return, we jump into the preview, click here. If you wanted to manually lodge it with the inland revenue, you can just make it a final in here. But because this is still a preview, we can save and file it with the inland revenue directly. So that's really great, a real time saver. I'll not look too much more into the other reports at this point, but you'll be quite familiar with a lot of the reports. They are a lot very similar to rural and definitely worth taking the time to go through and get that good information out when you've gone to the, the trouble of doing your coding. I just wanna show you now, if we come to this icon here, this little chat bubble in the bottom left, you'll see we've got the option to send a message. What this does is it actually sends a message through to us here in the office and we can respond to you. You can absolutely still ring us. We've got our 0800 number and we're all, we're all here ready to take your calls. But if you prefer the chat option, you can just click the chat bubble and choose send as a message. Quite handy with sending us a message because you can actually click here to see all your previous conversations. So if you've asked us a question and then the next month you think, oh, I can't remember what they said, you'll be able to click and see that conversation. And we can send you links to the help center and things too. You can quickly search the help center here also from this chat bubble. Or if you want to go to the help center, you just come to the question mark icon 
and click help. And as I mentioned, the help centres talk are full of information. You can find lots of good things in there. What we've covered today is really just kind of the, the tip of the iceberg, just a kind of um, quite simple run through. We haven't really touched on the planning area or anything like that. But if we come into our online training recordings here, we've actually got this seminar recording. <clears throat> and that's a, a session similar to this, but it goes into probably a bit more detail around things. And it also goes into the planning area in a bit more detail. So once um, you've kind of digested what we've gone over today, if you wanted to kind of have a look into the next step and maybe a bit more about the planning, perhaps, definitely this seminar recording is a really good one to go to next. Thank you so much for taking the time to, to jump on this training today. You see, it is a bit different, but hopefully um, it feels a bit more familiar and a bit more comfortable now. And definitely make the most of that help centre and, and come through to us either on that live chat, so just the wee icon on the bottom left, and send us a message or, or give us a ring if you need us. Awesome. Well, hey, thanks very much. Have a lovely day.